this meal. Zion, hello, Sishali, Ashlam, Sirayich. Zion, why aren't you asking about the health of your captives? Why aren't you asking how your captives are? Those captives, those captives. We're not blocking them. Those captives are our captives. Esos cautivos son nuestros cautivos. Sir. And we are here on the ninth day of Av, on a Jewish day of mourning. To have you guys. We are here on a Jewish okay. day of mourning to say that we are asking about the Shlom Asirayach, what our captives are doing and who is taking care of them. I'm here today because I am an immigrant who came to this country at the age of five. I could have been one of those kids in one of those concentration camps right now. But I'm not, and that's why I'm fighting to make sure this is not something that continues happening here in my state of Maryland. I am also here because last year, my mother was turned into ice by a Prince George's County police officer. Ooh. Shame! 
Prince George's County is a county that for a long time has said we will not work with ICE. So what they did was total opposite to what they've been saying for a long time. I have been going out there speaking to my local officials, letting them know what happened to my mother. And just recently, we got a general order from our county executive saying our police will not work with ICE. Yes. So I want to let all of you know that are here today, you have a duty to go out there and let your local officials know you don't want ICE in your communities. You don't want ICE separating your neighbors. You don't want ICE separating your families. That's right. Today is one of two full fast days in Judaism, Yom Kippur and today Tisha B'Av. The name Tisha B'Av literally means the ninth of Av because it takes place literally on the ninth day of the Hebrew month called Av, like July 4th takes place on the fourth day of July. Tisha B'Av is a national commemoration recalling all horrible tragedies that have happened to Jews throughout history beginning with the destruction of the first temple in 586 BCE and the destruction of the second temple in 70 of the common era. Tisha B'Av is a day to commemorate national loss and communal suffering. The rabbis knew if there were no acceptable vows for releasing these feelings of pain, suffering, anxiety, and fear, these feelings would seep into everyday life. So they created one day where all Jews got together to mourn all the losses that the Jewish community has suffered over time. Historically speaking, there is disagreement if any of the events and all of the events actually happened on the 9th of Av. But emotionally, it's clear that this day was designated as a magnet to remember all the communal pain we have suffered, almost like a lightning rod. Often when the Jewish community discusses all of these tragedies, we emphasize anti-Semitism that still exists in our contemporary world here in Howard County in the United States and abroad all over the world. It has become increasingly clear though that anti-Semitism does not live in isolation from all forms of hate. The only way to combat these forms of prejudice and hatred for the other is to see them as different aspects of the same root, prejudging another group of people. This year, I'd like to lift up another common aspect. Every single one of these forms of torture and pain propelled Jews in mass to pack what they could on their backs, walk, ride, fly, and board ships to migrate to a new home, to a new safe place to live. They left persecution, violence, and poverty. They abandoned things and severed ties with loved ones to create a new life filled with hope and possibility. They entered countries in any way they could by paying off officials, sneaking to the United States in trunks of cars, and carrying false papers. <coughs> but the Jewish community is not the only community that's suffering in our contemporary world. And if our pain only leads to helping ourselves, then we've missed the point of being human beings in community with others. It's time that we demand that the United States of America, including here in Howard County, treats its residents with dignity and respect. Yes! yes. <laughs> For wanting to be healthy, active, contributing members of the United States is definitely not a crime. Yes. yes. Wanting to give one's children an education and access to health care is not a crime. No. Wanting to live without fear of rape or gang violence is not a crime. Right. Wanting to unify one's family and one's country is not a crime. Right. Seeking asylum should not be a crime. Right. Rabbi Starr can't think of a more appropriate way to honor the suffering of Jews throughout history than to stand next to our nonviolent, tax-paying tax military-serving neighbors who uprooted their lives and lives of their children to immigrate to the United States of America regardless of their documentation status. For if others had not helped my four, her four grandparents, all immigrants to the country, she would not be alive today. The Book of Lamentations is read on Tisha B'Av, the second to last verse is so important that we are told to repeat it again and again after we have finished the whole text. If you can join me, Hashki Venu, Aranai Lecha, Nashuva, Chadesh, Yameinu, Kikedem.
take us back, O oh God, to yourself and let us come back. Renew our days as of old. In Judaism, we do not ask God to do anything for us that we are not willing to partner with God to make happen. May we as individuals, as a county, as a state, as a country, renew ourselves to not only remember the days of old, but to learn from them so that no immigrant has to be detained for the crime of wanting to live free. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Rabati Vagoyim, Sarati Bamidinot, Haita Lamas. Thank you. Hayu Savre Halero Shaive Hashalu. Ki Adonai Hona Hoka Hal Rafishahe Ha Ola Leha Hal Hushvi Lifne Tsar How she sits alone The city once full of people she has become like a widow, the greatest among the nations, the princess among the provinces. She is reduced to slavery. Her oppressors have become her master, her enemies prosper, since God has aggrieved her for the greatness of her sins. Her young children have left her as prisoners before the oppressor. <laughs> I'll share their batani. They are made. They are tape, oil, they'll make. Birko vod, kirya. The emo tam yum ru. Aye, da gan vaya in. The heat at fom kahalao. Birko vo ear. The heat ta fake na sham. El fake emo tam. My eyes are spent with tears, my bowels are troubled, my liver is poured upon the earth because of the destruction of the daughter of my people, because the children and the babies faint in the streets of the city. They say to their mothers, where is grain and wine? When they faint like wounded men in the streets of the city, when their soul was poured out on their mother's bosom. I stand here for my grandfather who lost his eye under forced Russian conscription in 1917, and luckily he had friends who brought him here. Joining with me in this reading are Rabbi, Rabbi Linda Joseph of Beta Aviv of Columbia and Rabbi David Katz of Har Sinai Congregation of Baltimore. All our enemies loudly rail against us. Panic and pitfall are our lot, death and destruction. My eyes shed streams of water over the ruin of my poor people. They wandered blindly through the streets, defiled with blood, so that no one was able to touch their garments. Away, unclean, people shouted at them. Away, away, touch not. So they wandered and wandered again, for the nations had resolved, they shall stay here no longer. I'm going to be chanting the final verses of the Book of Lamentations, and the words end with words that Rabbi Elise uh, mentioned earlier, that we should be brought back and made whole. We should be returned to days of old. I stand here today to say, before I chant this, that we reject the false nostalgia of this presidential administration as if America was once perfect, yeah. as if we can make it great again. So 
But my children and I, Ellie, Shamir, and I stand here today to say that there are things to which we would like to return. And that is an America that did a much better job of embracing its identity as a nation of immigrants. And that's what we pray for today on this Tisha B'Av. The old men are gone from the gates, the young men from their music. Shabbat misos libenu nepach level mecholenu. Gone is the joy of our heart, our dancing is turned into mourning. Nafla teretoshenu oy nalanu ki chatanu. The crown has fallen from our head, woe to us that we have sinned. Alze hayadaveli benu alele chashku enenu. Because of this our hearts are sick, because of these our eyes are dimmed. Al hartzion sheshamim shualim elchuvo. Because of Mount Zion which lies desolate, jackals prowl over it. Ata Adonai leolam teshev kisacha ledor vador. But you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. Your throne endures through the ages. Lama la nezach tishkachenu tazenu leorech yamim. Why have you forgotten us utterly, forsaken us for all time? Hashivenu Adonai lecha v'nashuva hadish yameinu kekedem. Take us back, O Lord, to yourself, and let us come back, renew our days as of old. Ki ma'os me'astanu katsafta leinu ad me'od. For truly you have rejected us, bitterly raged against us. Hashivenu Adonai elecha v'nashuva. Take us back, O Lord, to yourself, and let us come back. Renew our days as of old. I, 
I'm sorry because I'm I feel so cheerful when I see everybody here. I'm so grateful to you. I've been coming here for seven years, once a week, helping with Catholic services. We do we visit regular inmates and immigration detainees. And the stories I've been hearing for the last seven years are so heartbreaking and horrible. What's happening to these people is wrong. It has to stop. And living in Howard County, I hate that my tax dollars are supporting what happens to these Shame. people. Shame. 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 So when I see a few weeks ago when I saw the Never Again movement shutting down an immigration detention center, I cried. You all have brought me such joy and hope that people are coming out and doing something and not just saying, this is wrong, or I don't know what to do, but we have to stop and help people. People should not, the place where people are born should not determine whether or not they get to have a decent life. None of us are well until all of us are well. This is my deepest belief. I believe that God brought us here to love one another. And we are failing miserably at loving one another. We have people living on the streets, families in our hotels, immigrants in detention centers, way too many incarcerated people. Mm -hmm. And this is not okay. It has to stop. And having so many beautiful people coming out here to say this is not going to happen any longer. Thank you. And I can tell you that the people in there I told them about the event last weekend and the event this weekend and it's possible coming here would mean that I get banned and I'm not going to be allowed to come in. I hope it doesn't happen, but I asked them, if I, do you want me to take the risk? And they did. They were so excited that people were coming out <clears throat> to support them and to say visibly that this is wrong. So thank you. And thank they you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beatriz Herrera Fuentes, soy mexicana, tengo 20 años aquí trabajando en los Estados Unidos. Todo el tiempo he pagado mis impuestos. No soy ladrona ni soy delincuente. Yo por lo contrario vengo a trabajar y a producir para el país. Lo que no, lo que estoy muy demasiado triste, que muchos niños nuestros están quedando sin padres. Sí. 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 Oh, todos entendieron. Everyone understood that. Uh, her name is Beatriz Herrera Fuentes. She is from Mexico. She, is ha she has lived in the United States for 20 years. And she has always paid her taxes. She has always contributed to this country. She didn't come here to break any laws, to hurt anybody. And it brings her such sadness to see how many children are being left without parents. Y no se me hace justo que seamos gente trabajadora y nos expulsen como, como animales. And it's not right that immigrant communities are hardworking communities and families and they treat us like animals that they just want to get rid of. Yo tengo un hijo que tiene 39 años a hoy. Mi hijo le cortaron las alas aquí porque él estuvo estudiando aquí y le cortaron sus alas por el hecho de no ser, no tener un seguro social para poderse realizar como persona. Él tenía grandes sueños. Él quería ser un piloto, quería ser un, un buen deportista porque estaba en una escuela donde lo tenían en muy alto, pero el hecho de no tener un seguro, un número, ese le, le destrozaron su vida. A hoy mi hijo Le doy gracias a Dios que está bien, que está realizado en su país, pero aún así no es justo que 
que él haya aportado tanto para que me lo hayan expulsado de esta manera. No es justo. She also finds it very unjust that she came here with her son when her son was very young and her son was a very good student. He had very good grades. He had dreams of becoming a pilot. He had dreams of being uh, doing sports in college and he was very talented and he had so much to give to this country but instead of allowing my son to realize his dreams this country cut off his wings and because he didn't have a social security number he wasn't able to continue his studies this was before DACA this was before a dream act he's now 31 years old it has been over 15 years since she has seen him because he had to go back to Mexico where the only place where he could continue his education Yo tengo alrededor de 15 años sin ver a mi hijo. Para mí es muy duro el estar día a día pensando en él. Y de, me siento en todas las personas que tienen hijos aquí, y especialmente en las personas que se están yendo y dejando a sus criaturas aquí. It is very hard every day not being able to see my son and wondering how he's doing every single day. And I can imagine what other people are feeling that they can't be with their children right now. Es por eso que yo les doy gracias a todos ustedes por este apoyo que nos dan. Porque no somos, no somos criminales. Somos seres humanos que venimos a aportar al país, venimos a trabajar. Sí. Venimos a... person for being here for their support because immigrants are not criminals we're only here to work and to try to contribute to this country God bless you and thank you for listening to me the organization I represent friends of Latin America started as Howard County Friends of Central America in the mid-80s in response to U.S. policies of war in Central America. Throughout more than three decades, this is what we have learned. The U.S. government armed and heavily funded the governments of Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala. The U.S. government provoked a civil war in El Salvador. The U.S. oversaw the genocide of indigenous people by the Guatemalan government in the 1980s. So Hondurans, Salvadorans, and Guatemalans are political refugees fleeing U.S.-backed regimes. That's right. The U.S. government... The U.S. government supported a coup against the elected government of Honduras in 2009, and then backed the fraudulent election of current Honduran president in 2017. With the complicity of anti-popular governments in Mexico and Central America, the U.S. imposed unfair economic trade agreements. Mexican and Central American farmers could not compete with subsidized U.S. corn, for example. So, we have to ask ourselves, why do poor Latin American migrants continue to leave their homes in Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and others. They are fleeing gun violence. 70% of the guns used by migrants in Mexico and nearly half in Central America are US-made guns. Shame. Shame. They are fleeing gang violence. Central American gangs started in Los Angeles and other US cities after fleeing civil wars funded by the U.S. government back in the 80s and 90s. They were then reported to Central America, particularly to El Salvador. They are fleeing government repression. Many are leaving because multinational firms have taken over their land for industrial farming, mining, or tourism, and threatened those who re resist displacement. Many are leaving because their land was taken over to produce sugar, palm oil, soybeans, corn, or other biofuel products. Whoa. Many are forced to migrate because persistent droughts caused by climate change or global warming destroy their livelihood. We need to connect the dots. 
Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. did make those connections, although he was not alive to see this tragic turn of events. Let me quote from him something he said in, during his time. And I quote, true compassion is more than flinging a coin to a beggar. It is not haphazard and superficial. It comes to see that an edifice which produces beggars needs restructuring. Yes. Yes, that's right. A true revolution of values will soon look uneasily on the glaring contrast of poverty and wealth. With righteous indignation, it will look, like, it will look across the seas and see individual capitalists of the West investing huge sums of money in Asia, Africa, and South America only to take profits out with no concern for the social betterment of those countries and say, this is not just. It will look at our alliance with the, with the landed gentry of Latin America and say, this is not just. The Western arrogance of feeling that it has everything to teach others and nothing to learn from them is not just. Immigrants are not criminals, like we have said. We are hardworking people who want better lives for our families and for ourselves. Immigration is a manufactured crisis, so we don't think about the real crisis, which is systemic corruption that is coming from the top at the White House. That's right. Instead of building walls, prisons, selling guns that hurt people, forcing regime changes in other parts of the world, our tax dollars should be used to address real critical issues such as global warming, lack of access to health care, gun violence, yeah. racial violence perpetrated by white supremacists. Amen. Let me read a quote from Anne Frank written on January 13, 1943. Quote, terrible things are happening outside. Poor, helpless people are being dragged out of their homes. Families are being torn apart. Mm -hmm. Men, women, and children are separated. Mm. Children come home from schools to find that their parents have disappeared. Mm. Institutionalized anti-immigrant violence is alive. ICE is the tool that has been established to do these terrible things. Shame. 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 They detain working migrants because of what they look like. Shame. 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 They separate children from their parents. Shame. Shame. They detain pregnant women. Shame. They detain immigrants with disabilities and other medical conditions. Shame. Immigrants detained by ICE don't have a right to a defense lawyer. Shame. It is contradictory for Howard County to have a contract with ICE. According to its stated laws, no one can be discriminated based on race, color, creed, national origin, source of income, familial status, sex, occupation, religion, political opinion, personal opi uh, appearance, disability, age, marital status, sexual orientation, gender identity. This is one of the most comprehensive Respect for human rights. This is where we're standing right now, and we have a detention center right there in front of us. Yeah. When we know that ICE targets and arbitrarily arrests people because of their race, color, national origin, personal, personal appearance, occupation, like they did recently, etc., this is a clear violation of Howard County laws. Yeah. Yeah. So, we are calling for an end to the contract how our county government has with ICE. Yeah. We want everyone in our community to feel safe. We don't want 
to be complicit to any type of violations of human rights. We want to welcome new migrants, no ice, stop separating families. Immigrant rights are human rights. Yes. 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 Oh my God, with me. No hate, no fear. Immigrants are welcome here. No hate, no fear. Immigrants are welcome here. No Israel, 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 Israel,
The shofar is not only something we do at Rosh Hashanah, it is our call to arms. It is our call to our heart and our soul to wake up and say never again means something more than empty words that we have to do something for never again to exist. So please, close your eyes if you feel comfortable and let the shofar hear, reach you in ways that words sometimes can. The contract, not one more. Calvin Ball show ice the door.
The Jewish tradition is about making comparisons to teach us to draw analogies. And in fact, the folks that wrote these medieval Jewish poems about being sad that I read today and last night were all about drawing analogies. They're like, this destruction of the temple is exactly like when Abraham was told by God to divide all those animals. And people were like, what? What do you mean it's exactly like that? He's like, you know, it was night and birds of prey flew down and grabbed at things. Now, does that explain our situation now? It does feel like we're in the middle of the night, right? Birds of prey have come fucking out from all directions and they're flying down attacking things. It's not exactly like the the, the, the brief bit of Atarium in the Bible, but it's enough like it. And we're describing what's happening to the disenfranchised and the vulnerable. And we're saying never again is now, meaning we don't want that fascist stuff that happened to happen again. It's really not that hard to get the analogy. It's really not. <laughs>